Now you're going to want it to idle for at least a minute to warm up. Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. I hope everybody's having a great week. Do not go anywhere because I have something super important to tell you. Why you should not adjust your two cycle carburetor and if you have to, how to do it properly. Before we go any further, I do want to stop for just a second and give a huge thanks. I started an Amazon wish list a while back and it was a way for subscribers to be able to support the channel and give me thanks and it's been just amazing. Y'all have been so awesome with your outpouring of gifts and I am just overwhelmed with how generous everybody has been. But I had just received everything off my wish list. Charles, thank you so much. I cannot believe you did that. That is just so generous of you and I, I just cannot thank you enough. You wiped out my entire list and bought everything on there. <laughs> it's like Christmas all over again. You have no idea how awesome that is. I'm going to put all of it to such good use and I hope that you will email me so I can send you something in, you know, thanks for how awesome you are. But I just wanted to give you a huge thanks because that was just amazing. So thank you. So I'm constantly getting comments. Tell us how to adjust this. How did you adjust that? Well, there's reasons that I haven't explained it yet. Now, like I've said before, we get in over 2,000 pieces of equipment at the shop every year, and probably seven to 800 of those are two cycles that I see. And I can tell you from my experience of years that most of the time, it is not a simple carb adjustment that's going to actually fix your machine. So let's go into reason number one, why you probably do not need to adjust your carburetor. First of all, I made a video when I first started doing these videos back last year. I'm gonna put a link up above for you to check out that 70% of the machines that I see come in out of that seven to 800 units, all have water in them. So the first thing you need to check whenever you have issues with your machine, especially if it's been sitting for a while, and even if it hasn't been sitting for a while, you have to check your fuel and make sure there's no water in it because I don't know why, but it just sucks it in out of the air. So the first thing to check is your fuel. Also, if you're using canned fuel, you cannot always rely on that because I've seen multiple times, especially with the True Fuel brand, and I'm not knocking it because people that use it, they come into the shop and they say they've been using it for years and that it works just fine. I think there's just bad batches at the store and sometimes it doesn't work. And I, I don't know why. And sometimes machines just don't want to run on them anymore. That's all I do. I change their fuel out and it's fine. But People might think that it just needs an adjustment and that has nothing to do with it. Second, you can have a dirty fuel filter. A fuel filter can, you know, change the action of your machine. So you, that's another thing you need to check first. Also fuel lines. You could have a collapsed fuel line. It could be deteriorating and letting debris go up into your carburetor, which would clog your screen. You can have a clogged tank vent which would be limiting the supply of gas to your carburetor. There's all these things you need to check before you actually go adjusting on your machine. Along with the gas issue, a lot of times people do not think about how long their gas has been sitting. Everybody forgets. A lot of times people say they come into the shop and they're like, oh, it ran two months ago. Two months is actually six months. People just don't remember how long it's been sitting. And gas, I swear, it does not last regular fuel from a, from a gas station. Maybe not the non-ethanol. It probably will last a little bit longer, but I still don't trust it. Gas does not last over 60 days. It starts acting funny and in two cycles and four cycles, not in your car, but definitely in the smaller engines. Now I get a lot of units in at the beginning of the season that have sat all winter long and just sat to a point to where it hardened the diaphragm, the metering diaphragm, just enough to where it's not going to regulate the gas correctly. It's either getting too much or not enough. And to tell you the truth, you can fix this all by yourself with no adjustment and it's pretty simple if it's only set for about you know six months to maybe a year. Longer than that, and a lot of times, you've just got to change your diaphragm out and there's nothing you can really do about it. But at the beginning of the season, if you feel like it's not starting, not wanting to get the gas that it should, play with the choke. Just start it up, run it full throttle, and just keep popping the choke up over and over again, just letting it rub up and take it off choke until it acts like it wants to die, put it back up. Do that, and I, I it might take you five minutes to 10 minutes to keep doing it continuously, but it will loosen that diaphragm back up and get you going another season without any kind of adjustment or repair. 
So that's another thing that I do before I go adjusting on something is just try to get the diaphragm to loosen up because a lot of times if I go ahead and I just give it a little bit more gas and I give it to the customer, yeah, they might take it home and they'll use it that first time and it'll run good, but eventually they're going to get that metering diaphragm to loosen up while they're running it and what will happen is it'll start getting too much gas and then it'll bog down and it's gonna be, need to be adjusted right back to where it was. Now, here's the main reason I haven't told anybody how to adjust anything. I'm scared. So why am I scared to give you all this information? I don't know all the laws. First of all, I do know two of them and they scare me to death. First, if I take an exhaust screen out of a customer's unit and give it back to them without replacing it or cleaning it, I can get a $3,600 fine from the EPA. If I sell an adjusting tool for the carburetor over the counter at my shop, I can get a $20,000 fine from the EPA. And I don't wanna do that. But then I look and see everybody else is doing it. So maybe it is okay, I don't know. In my about section, I have a disclaimer saying that these videos are for entertainment pur purposes only. So I don't know, hopefully that'll work. And one more thing before I get into how to adjust things properly, if you decide to buy a brand new carburetor and you put it on, it does not need to be adjusted. I can tell you from experience, I am positive 100% of the time that if you buy an OEM brand new carburetor, you put it on your machine and everything else is correct, you will not have a problem with this carburetor and it does not need to be adjusted. That is why I stopped buying aftermarket steel Husqvarna carburetors because probably 70% of the time I would try to adjust them after I put them on because I know the fuel line, fuel filter, everything, everything else was brand new. There was no reason why it shouldn't run. Piston and cylinder were beautiful. I had perfect compression. The carburetor would not run and it was just bad craftsmanship. So if you buy an aftermarket carburetor and you put it on and you know everything else is correct, and it does not run correctly, return it and get another one. A lot of times it's a 50-50 shot. You know, you might get a good one, you might not, but it does not need to be adjusted. So most people don't have all the same equipment at their house. They might have a Husqvarna trimmer with a steel backpack blower with an Echo edger or something, but most people don't have all the same stuff. So you're gonna have to have multiple tools. So what's that mean? Time to go tool shopping. Now don't go to your local repair shop because they're probably not gonna sell you something because they don't wanna get the fine like I do. But my friend, John Clem, thanks buddy for getting me this awesome toolkit to keep at the house. It has everything in it. You can get online and find these all over the place. I'm gonna leave a link in the description box below so you can get your own. But look at all these adjusting tools. That is a ton of different heads for these screws. So let's check out what comes in this toolkit. You get a ton of adjusters. I mean, the hexagon that goes for the some of the steels. You got double Ds. It goes on a lot of the Troy belts, uh, trimmers and, and backpack blowers and stuff like that. The spline tool that fits a lot of the Craftsman's, the Husqvarna and the Poulin stuff. I'm not sure about what those really go for, but the Pac-Man, it's another one that goes on the Troy belt trimmers and, and the Craftsman's and some of the Bolins. They're, they're pretty much, um, a lot of those will have the Pac-Man too. You've got um, like this small head single D that, that goes on with a lot of the older uh, Echo stuff and Shindawa stuff. You'll see some of that. And then just some small, real small flat heads slotted adjusters. So that is a pretty neat kit and it is cheap. All right, so first we're gonna look at some different carburetors and see what you're needing to look for on where your adjustment screws are and how to get to them and be able to adjust them because most of them have adjustment screws. Now this is an aftermarket steel carburetor, one of the junk ones I told you about that do not work most of the time. They have fake limiter caps on them, so you can just adjust away with a flat head on those and it's not gonna matter. You're gonna wanna find out where your low idle adjust screw is and your high speed screw is and most of the time you can find that because one has a little l on it and the other has an h but if you cannot see in that far the high adjustment is always the farthest away from the engine block on most of the steel trimmer um, actual oem carburetors they either have both of them have limiter caps on them. This one does not have a, a limiter cap on the low but it does on the high to take that that off you'll just grab a flat head with your flat head you will just unscrew it out as far as possible that way you have a little bit of a uh, 
extension right here where you can get your your screwdriver up in there and then it just pops right off like that you just pop it off if a carburetor does not have limiter caps on them then they have some special head that you will need one of those special tools i showed you earlier and like this one i think came off some kind of poolan and it is um some splined adjustment, just like on some of the Husqvarna carburetors, they have the splined tops on them also. You will see a lot of double Ds, Pac-Man, stuff like that. Now the steels, they have the um, little octagon shape, shape one, this one might not though. No, this is an older one, so it's got, we'll have to um, pop off both of them because they're both got limiter caps on them and then it's just a Phillips after you get get done with that now the only one that's a little tricky that you can't really tell where they are and there's multiple videos on this you've probably seen them already this is a brand new echo carburetor when you get a brand new one the lim limiter caps are not installed yet so you don't have to worry about it but if it's a brand new OEM carburetor you're not going to have to adjust it anyways but if it is on the machine already and you go to adjust it, you will have those limiter caps inside of there. And the only actual way to get those out is uh, with an actual special tool from Echo. I will put a link in the description box below if I can find one um, that they sell online. But this has backwards threads on it. And you will just go straight down the center and, and of that. This is the high on, on this carburetor right here hidden underneath the primer bulb. And it will have that little black cap in there and you will just screw in backwards and pull it on out. And then the low adjustment is right here on the top. So you'll have to pull those limiter caps out first. And then after you do that, it's just a really small um, flat head to adjust both of those. So you've got the high speed adjustment underneath the primer bulb and your idle low is on top of the carburetor straight down the center of this vein right here. Now one more important adjust on all of these carburetors, they all have it, is your throttle adjust. And so you'll have your high, your low, and then the throttle adjust will be separate. And what it does is when you screw it in, it actually just lets the throttle lever open a little bit and give it a little bit more air. So if you're in a bind and your machine is not idling, it will run perfect, you know, on high, but it will not idle. Sometimes you can just screw that in just a little bit and it'll give you that, that little bit more air to idle if it's getting too much gas on the low end. Um, on the Echo, it's this screw right here above the primer bulb. And when you screw that in, it'll just open that throttle up just a little bit. Um, on the Husqvarna ones, it's this screw right here does the same thing you go in on it and it just opens that throttle up just a hair all right so we know when not to adjust we know what tools that we need we know how to find the adjustments and how to get to them last thing to do let's adjust something all right for this demonstration i am super excited because a customer brought in this beauty i know it looks scary but wait until you find out how awesome it is this is a 27 year old chainsaw. It is an Echo CS5000 made by Kioritz and it is just super powerful. 50 cc's of power in this small compact body, super light. Came with a 20 inch bar with 325 pitch chain on it. I'm just telling you, these were some of the best saws ever made. On top of that, it has an HDA Walbro carburetor on it, which was one of the best carburetors ever used on these small engine two cycles. So when the customer brought this in, he said that it ran a few months ago, might have been longer, who knows, but that it would run but would not idle and kept dying on him. So I checked it and yes, it was doing exactly what he said it would. So I checked a few things first. I always pull the plug, look inside the cylinder, make sure that it's okay. This thing is beautiful, immaculate, like it just came off the showroom floor. This is why I love these chainsaws because I swear I have no idea what they made the, you know, the piston cylinder out of, but it was some of the best metal they ever made. After I found out that it had 130 pounds of compression, piston looked beautiful. The next thing I do, I go to the gas tank. The gas was fine. Um, I went ahead and did dump his and put mine in there just to make sure that it wasn't some weird funky batch. Went to run it again. It did the same thing. So after I've checked those few things, I will go ahead and try to give it a little bit of adjustment. I did and didn't matter what I did, it kept dying on idle and would not, would not run. So the next thing I have to do, I've got to start replacing some parts. 
So what do I try? I try a new spark plug first. That didn't do anything. Then I go and I look at the fuel filter and it's pretty old. So I changed it out and the fuel line because over time these can collapse on themselves and that could be the issue. But once again, it still didn't want to idle. So the next thing I got to do, I got to go into the carburetor. And what I found when I first took it apart, although the diaphragm was actually still in pretty good shape, when I took off the metering diaphragm cover, and this is not an HGA carburetor, but I'm just showing you so you can see these holes. On the metering diaphragm side, the cover actually has a hole in it. And so over time, also because this guy didn't have an air filter cover over his air filter, it sucked a bunch of trash into that hole that was compacting down on the metering diaphragm and not letting it run correctly. So I went ahead and put a carburetor kit in. So now I'm 100% sure. I am completely confident that the fuel filter's good, the fuel line's good, the diaphragms in the carburetor are good. Next thing to go, we gotta adjust this carburetor out. Now, unfortunately, due to all these different units, all of the adjustments are different. So I can't just tell you do this on any chainsaw and it's gonna be the adjustment that you need to initially start out with. You're gonna to have to get on Google, do some searching and see what you can find to know where to start all of your adjustments, your high, low, and your idle. On this particular Echo CS5000 chainsaw with this HDA uh, carburetor, it is two and a half turns out. So I will seat both of my high and low jets in all the way lightly, do not wrench down on it because you can destroy your carburetor that way. Then you will come out two and a half full turns. Now for your third adjustment with the idle screw, that is the one that moves that throttle lever and, and the throttle valve inside of your carburetor, you're going to want to turn that in until it is lightly touching that lever and then you're going to want to turn it in three full turns. Now this is pretty much the same on all chainsaws. That's where you're gonna to wanna to start when you're adjusting. The adjusting screws located on this saw are on the right side near the clutch cover. Now you've got your high and your low adjusting screws in there. And then this actually has a toolless idle adjusting. So it's got a knob here that you can twist with your finger or you can use a flathead if you'd like to adjust it that way. So here's our idle and here's our high and low down here. Now I'm going to turn both of them in all the way and I'm gonna come out two and a half full turns on both of the high and the low. Then I'm gonna go in with three full turns on my idle after I touch the uh, throttle lever. Also, one thing to keep in mind when you are adjusting a carburetor, when you're running it at wide open, make sure that you only do it in 10 second intervals and then let it idle for 10 seconds. That way you won't cause any engine damage. All right, so let's start it up. I mean, I'm pretty confident with a brand new fuel filter, fuel line, carburetor kit, and proper adjustments, I think it's gonna start and it might be needing to be fine tuned, but I think it's actually going to start off just fine. Wow, I gotta say, it's pretty spot on already, but we're gonna throw the tachometer meter on here, make sure it's doing good, and uh, fine tune it just a little bit. So although it sounded like it was idling really good and it was screaming at full throttle, 14,000 RPMs is way too much and you will burn this saw up if you leave it that way. So we still gotta do some fine tuning and the only way to do that is with a tachometer. So you want to purchase one of these, you can get a good one online for about 20 bucks. I highly recommend buying one if you're going to fine tune a machine. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna jump into this low idle screw. And what we're gonna do, we're going to turn it in counterclockwise until we reach maximum RPMs and it starts to drop off a little bit. And you will see that in the tachometer. And then I'm gonna come back to that maximum RPMs uh, point. Now you need to give everything at least 20 seconds to make sure that it's gonna stay at that level that you're putting it at. Once we do that, we're going to turn in our idle adjust screw until it hits 3,700 RPMs. After that, we're gonna go back to the low and we're going to turn it counterclockwise out until it hits back at that honey hole of 2,700 RPM. Did you get all that? I know, it's sort of tough, but you can rewind.
All right, so we are totally confident now that that idle is set perfect. Next, we're gonna go to the high and it's much easier. Now we're wanting to hit about 12,000 RPMs. And to do that, if it's above 2,000 RPMs, we're going to want to go counterclockwise and give it more fuel. And if it is below 12,000 RPMs, we're going to want to go clockwise and make it a little leaner. So since we were banging at 14,000 RPMs earlier, we're gonna go counterclockwise to enrich it just a little bit, hit that honey spot so we can hit 12,000 RPMs. So we finally got it bouncing around 11.5 and a little under is definitely a lot better than a little over. I'm still gonna play around with it a little bit, try to hit that honey hole, but that's pretty much how it's done. Well, that's it. Hopefully this video saved you time, money, and frustration in the future. If you haven't found us on Facebook yet, find us at facebook.com slash chicanic. Find us on Instagram at The Real Chicanic, where I show things I do not show on other social media. Or if you would like to go to chicanic.com, check that out. We also have a store there where you can buy t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, and hoodies. Thanks, and have a great day.